Maria Shaleos, Tom Bettis with the KSL Greenhouse. Today we are at the USU Botanical Center with Sheridan Hansen. We're out here because we know people are excited about gardening, but it's tough in February to start gardening. So we want to give you some ideas of how you can extend your gardening season. And talk about kind of the principle, Tom, behind low tunnels and high tunnels. Well, the principle here is that you are doing two things. You are creating an environment to be able to warm up the plants, but also warm up the soil. And so we're going to be talking about things like raised beds and what are called low tunnels, using hoops to put plastic over and other methods such as larger buildings so that if you want to, you can get gardening sooner. We're in the demonstration garden with Sheridan and Sheridan, I love this concept that you've got here. Talk about exactly what we are seeing. So right here we have a raised bed, which is a really great way to warm up the soil a little bit earlier because it's up, it's out of the ground. We're gonna get some of that light um, beating on the sides of this um, raised bed and it's gonna warm up our soil and then we can kind of trap that heat. So what you're seeing here is um, frames for a low tunnel and we'll show you what a low tunnel looks like once it's covered but this is um, you kind of do need a structure to to drape that fabric or that plastic that you're going to use over the tunnel so that you can essentially trap that heat so what I would do is once I drape this if I choose plastic if I choose fabric and then I can go ahead and plant in it and that's going to give me a little bit of season extension I can get things in the ground a little bit earlier depending on our temperatures outside so Tana it sounds like we need to start with how much space do we have and what do we want to grow really do because you can do anything really simple you know like this would probably cost a few hundred dollars to install but you can even go smaller we'll look at some examples of even less expensive things in a little bit later in the video but you really do need to do some pre-planting because not only do you need to know about this but you need to know about when to plant and plant spacing and we have a tendency to start way too much and then it becomes little puppies but you don't have enough room for everything so Sheridan if we were to start say at this size talk about this particular style because usually we see the PVC pipe in some rebar or something and right. this one we haven't done that right so there is no rebar a lot of the times we'll drive PVC down into the ground and then we'll put or I'm sorry we'll put we'll drive the rebar down in the ground and then we'll put the PVC over the rebar to kind of hold it this style we're not doing that instead since this is a raised bed and we have sides that we can work with that are wood um, we've just taken the PVC and bent it um, you want to bend it on a nice warm day so it's good and flexible and you don't break it and you're gonna have to go really slow when you do that but we've just used um, basically a, a clip kind of thing um, that is stuck to the side of the bed and you can see I can still move the PVC in and out so when this is done for the season and I'm ready to just have this bed um, uncovered for the summer I can take the frame out I can take the plastic off and you know really utilize the space and maximize what I'm doing here so really simple design but works really well I like this because you can actually see how far the pipe actually goes into the soil you can yeah so we're just a few inches maybe six inches into the soil not a ton um, so you really don't need to go really far because I would be worried that they'd fall over if I didn't put them far enough into the ground right and that does happen and in the low tunnel that I'm going to show you later you can see where even the rebar has shifted a little bit with our high winds so it can happen and you just need to make sure it's nice and sturdy but this is a really good design to make sure that you have a nice sturdy place um, to to run a low tunnel and to get these plants going a little earlier. One thing that I like to do with these before I put them out is paint them with water-based latex paint or a spray paint, the white. Mm -hmm. And that, because this PVC, it's somewhat UV resistant, but it'll crack in the sun after two or three years. And so if you will give them an inexpensive coat of water-based latex or spray paint, they will last a lot longer. Right, and these have been in for quite some time, probably about eight years, and we haven't had to replace them yet. And that is because they do have that coating on them and it, they've been protected. So that's a great tip. What type of soil do we need to start with? So with a raised bed, you're gonna start with a mix that's really nice and light. Um, what we've done here, um, and you don't have to necessarily do this. There are a million things you can do. You can find soil recipes online, but what we do is we use half native soil and then half compost. And when I say compost, we're using something that's plant-based like soil pep. So we're not running into problems necessarily with phosphorus in our soil and too much, um, too much of that that can cause some salt problems with our plants if we have an excess. Soil pep is a compost made in Idaho, but it's bark based. Mm -hmm. and there's no animal manures in it. 
Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll just mix that half and half and we do, um, you know, we'll mix it. We do large spaces, so we'll mix it with a skid steer, but you could do it in wheelbarrows um, and mix it yourself in smaller quantities. And then we just put that in our beds and it lasts for a long time. Ton, what do we need to think about when we're talking about wood around these? Well, if you can afford it, redwood or cedar is a way to go because it's rot resistant. Uh, there are some other woods out there that are rot resistant. Um, black locust is one and Osage orange, but it's really hard to come by those woods. And so this one right here, the redwood or cedar, but even then, if you can't afford that, construction grade lumber is fine. It just won't last quite as long. Something I've done when we used to run um, some community gardens was to dig the soil out every year and then we would wash it down let it dry and then use linseed oil on the inside and out to help protect it but with the linseed oil i could get probably 10 years out of one of these before they needed to be rebuilt good redwood will last 15 to 20. so you're talking about linseed oil do we need to worry about that leaching into our no, soil affecting the plants no uh, the tr what you really need to worry about is treated lumber and a lot of people are afraid of treated lumber because it has fairly harsh chemicals in it that preserve the wood. And so the opinions vary quite a bit on if that stuff's actually safe or not. USU soil scientists recommend that if you use treated lumber, don't plant anything within six inches of the edge and do not put root crops in it. But a lot of people just to be safe won't use treated lumber and, will, and if they can't afford it, will use linseed oil and just construction grade what we would call dug fir, pine, or some one of these spruce, one of these kinds of lumbers. So let's walk over and take a look at exactly what kind of product we'll be putting over the top of these to kind of create our miniature greenhouse. Now I want to talk about what kind of product to put over your tunnels once you have your frame made. So Sheridan, talk about what we're seeing here. You have a plastic and you also have this more fabric type material. Right, so this is a like a remay type material. It's a little more breathable than the fabric. It's not going to give us as much season extension, or it's a little more breathable than the plastic. It's not going to give us as much season extension as we would see with the plastic. So the plastic's going to trap heat a little bit better. Um, and this is just a fig that is, you know, it's been wrapped for this for the winter to try and overwinter it really nicely. Um, but on the low tunner, tunnel, I've been running this um, remay just because I want it to be a little breathable. I want it to be permeable to water. I don't have anything planted in here that really needs, um, you know, a higher temperature. So what I have planted under here are things like um, spring blooming bulbs like ranunculus and anemone. So that's why we chose this versus a plastic. And if you're gonna do a plastic, there are options. There are things like um, greenhouse plastic, which you see here, it's a six mil plastic is what it's called. Um, if you go to a, you know, a greenhouse supplier, somebody that has those types of products, you ask for that six mil plastic and they'll show you exactly what it is. It comes in big rolls, you can order online as well. Same with the Remay, you can order that um, in different weights. And this is a pretty heavy weight. Um, but you would order, you know, if you're going to overwinter, if you want a little more season extension, you're going to order a heavier weight and you can get it in the big rolls if you need to as well. So, so describe for us what we're seeing here, because if you peek under here, you actually have a mini tunnel. Right. Yeah. So we're doubling up. So we've got the, the low tunnel on the outside and then inside. And we've had a little problem with the mice eating um, through our, our our row cover here. This is essentially just a row cover and it's just a little bit um, of fabric on smaller hoops that stays closer to the ground. And you can see underneath here, I actually doubled up again and I have some straw that goes on top of it. And you can see our bulbs are now just starting to emerge when they would normally emerge a little bit later in the season. I'm getting them to emerge in early February. So by layering, giving myself an outer layer, an inner layer, and some insulation, I can drive my season a little bit further. Now, if I was planting something like lettuce, I definitely wouldn't put the insulation around it, but I could definitely run an outer cover and then a row cover underneath. So Sheridan, let's talk about what we can plant in these low tunnels. Are we just talking, you know, 
lettuces and vegetables. You, these are flowers. These are obviously. flowers. So I mean, so you what can, can we plant? You can run these types of situations for a number of crops. Typically, we run for vegetables. That's kind of what we're after with these early season crops. Is we want things, you know, like our lettuces and bok choy, things like that. This would keep some of that cold night temperature off them and give them the opportunity to grow. But like what you see here, we can definitely run um, things like flowers. And I have grab this. You know, I've started our, our lettuces and our bok choys here, and this is something that in maybe two weeks I can get out into the garden. You know, it's the beginning of February, I kind of want to be mid-February, end of February, and I can totally get these out under one of these types of systems and get them growing, and they'll survive the night temperatures because we are protecting and giving them the opportunity to grow. Ton, when can people get started on different things that they want to plant? Well, the normal outplanting date, the soonest you want to get anything out if you're not using protection, is about mid-March, and that would be the most hardy thing. So maybe peas and onions, uh, there's broccolis and things you might be able to do. But with this sort of a system right here, what would you say, Sheridan, two to four weeks before? Absolutely, and it kind of depends on the crop and how tender it is. I mean, there's varying levels, but like you said, most of those cold crops like broccoli, cauliflowers, things like that that can withstand some of those cooler temperatures can definitely go out two to four weeks yeah. before. And it's, a lot of it's going to depend on what you're doing. A simple covering of just the Rime fabric here, the row cover, might give you a week or 10 days at the most, but something doubled up like this is going to extend out farther. And then the plastic with something like this would even be more. But just even with the season extension, because of low light levels and potential for sub-zero temperatures, I wouldn't go any more in a system like this than a month ahead of time. So Sheridan, this frame is different than the one it we is. looked at earlier. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a metal pipe. It is. So and I'm not sure how far it goes into the ground or if there's rebar in this one or. Yeah, and this is the one that I said, you know, we get high winds. And so you can see this is bent. Um, and that's just because we did have a high wind storm last fall and it, it moved the tunnel a little bit. When you do this, you always want to orient your short side toward the wind. That's a good tip. Oh, if we do the long tip. side, we're going to catch, you know, whatever fabric or plastic we have over it and we'll rip it off. So try and do the short side if you can. This one doesn't extend into the ground ah. very much. You can see it's on rebar. So I've got big long pieces of rebar. I think I just used two foot pieces here and it's about a foot in the ground and then I set this over it. So, and that gives me a nice sturdy frame. And you can see this one's a little taller than the one that we had in the edible garden that we looked before too. So looked at before too. So this gives us, you know, a nice height to work under. It's, you know, I actually pull the side up and I can squeeze myself right under and I can check on things without having to disrupt things too much because I have a little extra height here. You talked about the direction for the wind, mm -hmm. but we need to make sure we're going to get enough sun. Absolutely. So what do we need to look at if we're putting this in our in our yards? Right. So uh, most of our crops, things like vegetables, cut flowers, those types of crops need full sun for the most part. So we want to be in a nice sunny location that gets a good six to eight hours of sunlight. Um, something like this, you know, we get sunlight going through so I wouldn't worry so much about um, you know if the sun is going to penetrate through this or even the plastic we're going to get really good light penetration through that um, but as things warm up and we start to move through the season you definitely want to pull this back in the daytime get some really good light going on if we have a nice warm day um, and get get that light to your crops. Anything we need to talk about out here that I've forgotten to mention to you? Um, the only other thing I'm thinking is when you pull this down, you want to make sure you secure it really well. So let's let's just kind of show how we secure it. So this comes over and around, and then I'm using just landscape staples. Um, you know, they're kind of beat up at this point because we've taken it on and off a bunch of times to check the low tunnel throughout the season. But these just go right down into the ground. I make sure that I have this end nice and tight, really well covered. Otherwise it's just going to blow away. Right, and we don't want to blow away. And then I found that sandbags are my best friend with this. So I will sandbag the ends, I'll, I'll also sandbag the sides just to make sure I have a really nice taut kind of cover that it kind of protects us if the wind does blow and then we are not going to have that cover blowing away. So. Just find what works for you. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. You just do what works for you. And I found sandbags is the way to do it here.
We moved to another area of the demonstration garden and we're looking at some cold frames. Describe for us, Sheridan, what we're seeing here. So this is a cold frame on a raised bed. Um, this is a really simple way to season extend. Ton described it as kind of the Victorian era, which it really is. It's not high tech at all. It's really simple to do. And you can do this with old windows. We've done it um, just with plexiglass and built a frame around it. But what it is, I've set this on top of that um, raised bed and you can see I have created this little space. Um, I've oriented the slope, so the slopes, and I've oriented the slope to kind of face south. So I'm going to capture light, I'm going to capture heat. It's all of those same principles that we've mm -hmm. been talking about, um, just in a kind of low-tech, much smaller setting. So this is something that's really easy to do for the backyard gardener. If you have a raised bed, you can retrofit a frame like this over it. And we've made it so the whole frame can lift off. So if I have a couple master gardeners with me, we can pick it up and we can move it completely off this raised bed if we want to. Which can be an advantage, you know, once you're getting into mid-May, there's no need for this. Right. And so you can just move it. And you opened that up, and I wanted to point out, I want you to talk a little bit about this. This is called a cloche. And this is used for a single plant. So historically, what they do is they take out just loads of these out into the fields and they put one on every single plant for the evening for the night to capture that heat um, and make sure that we have that season extension for that single plant and then in the morning you've got to again vent this so we've got to tip it up we've got to remove it we've got to do something to it because think about this glass container if I was to leave like a liter soda bottle out that was clear like this um, over a plant and I didn't have ventilation, I would build up heat throughout it's the day. It's gonna get so hot. And I could cook <laughs> my plant again, so same deal. But this is a much smaller um, way to season extend. And one thing I wanna point out is the bigger we get, the more season extension we have. So something like this, not very much protection. Uh, my temperature at night is gonna drop really low, pretty much close to what we get um, with the evening temperatures, but it does kind of keep that freezing air off of my plant. Um, something like this, a little bit more protection, because you can see I've got more air space, um, I'm trapping a little more heat, and then you know we've got the high tunnel, we've got the low tunnel, that's gonna be something that gives us a lot more protection, but fun little kind of historic way it to is, do this. And this is, you know, if you were homesteading, you know, 1890, 1900, 1915, I have historic gardening guides from like the War Department for Victory Gardens with instructions on how to make this exact thing. Their dimensions were three by six, and it's something that great grandma and grandpa did, you know, to start vegetables and it's still very relevant today. It is, and you know, you're still gonna have to vent it. And we've built that in kind of, so we can just pop that up. Oh. We have ventilation when it's warm, um, but really simple, really easy to use, and I can kind of adjust my height. Um, some of these that we've built, we've, we've done it so we could do like three different heights. This one just has one, but um, really simple, really easy to use. I have run this type of a system in my own kitchen garden for years, and I absolutely love it. It's so easy to use, and I don't have to think about it so much. <laughs> so I built some of these up in the Cache Valley, and I built them to a height of about three feet, and then they were a little bit deeper, but I started artichokes in them in late April and left them in there and I thought I'd cooked them to death because I'd missed a weekend and they were fine, but you know, we started lifting the lids up toward the summer, but we had artichokes so much earlier and I was impressed with myself because it was the Cache Valley and it's just a little bit colder up there, but uh, we threw a bunch of straw in there and things and then covered it and they overwintered. Mm -hmm. And so we had a little, uh, some extra framing on it stuff to protect it, but these can be quite useful for a lot of things. Yeah, I love them myself. So why is this kinder or easier? Um, it just, it doesn't trap quite as much heat, so I'm not gonna have those huge spikes in temperature necessarily. Um, you know, it just is easier for me to think about smaller space. Um, if I'm running, you know, a kitchen garden, I probably don't have room for that big high tunnel, you know. So this is something that's easy, doable, it's inexpensive. I don't have to think about it too much. And if you make it so that you can ventilate it, where you're just popping it up a little bit, medium and high, I mean, you can pop it up just to the lowest setting and you're probably gonna be okay most nights if you forget to close it, so. So once we're out of spring and the cold temperatures, you just take the top off? The whole thing off, so I get three or four master gardeners and we all lift a corner and we take it off and we can just set it up. You've out built store. this on top of a raised bed. 
you know, it looks like a complete frame, but it's on top of a raised bed. And so you just unscrew a few little pieces and lift it off and move it, set it aside for the summer. And if you want to use it in the fall, you can or leave it until the next uh, early spring. And sometimes we get lazy and we just leave it on and we just open, we open these and set them all the way back and we run basil in it. Basil likes the heat. So, I mean, if it doesn't, if, you know, if we forget to vent it or anything, it's not going to kill it. Um, but sometimes we get a little lazy and it's okay. This is a good lazy gardener. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. Well, I like them because the last several years, I'm not having to mess with greenhouse plastic, you know, throwing it away and getting more. The Lexan or the uh, plexiglass is a little more expensive up front, but like you said, you can use recycled windows. And if you use a double pane recycled window, you've got a little more insulation value out of it. But this with some linseed oil and a few things, 10 or 15 years minimally before you might have to rebuild it. I love the idea of recycling anything. So recycling windows really kind of A lot of times you can to go to a window shop and they'll have old windows that they'll either give you or sell you for five or $10 a frame. Yeah. But my question would be, how does how is that different than the plexiglass? Um, you know, the glass is definitely a little more breakable most of the time, especially if you get old windows that aren't tempered. So you have to be um, careful of that. So you do have to be careful. I mean, that's why we chose plexiglass here because we get a lot of little kids visiting and I was like, ooh, we better use plexiglass. Um, it's just the plexiglass is a little more forgiving. If I drop something on it, it's likely not to break like how the glass will. So I feel a little better about that. But as far with as heat? With, he with heat, it's pretty much the same unless you have that double pane, um, you know, layered window that Ton was talking about that would give you a little more insulation factor. It's about the same. We've moved now to a larger space, and other than the size, what would be the difference in deciding what to do? So the difference between this and what we've looked at is this traps a lot more air, and we have a lot more soil that's gonna be absorbing some of that radiation, that heat, and so we get better season extension. You kinda have to think about the bigger the space, the more protection I have. So this is an unheated space. It's just capturing solar radiation. This is what we call a high tunnel or a caterpillar house, a hoop house. Um, and you know, since we have this big space, we're covered with plastic, we capture that radiation really easily. And um, the ground warms up and then overnight, that ground re-radiates heat out. And that's what's gonna keep our plants alive. So this is a really good option if you have more space um, to season extend for sure. Uh, but Ton, with more space, you're probably going to want to till the ground. Yes, and we're not in, we're not advocating tilling too much. This would be something you do in the spring or fall to prep the soil. You know, you're you're multitasking when you do your tilling, so you're probably putting organic matter in. And when you do that, as soon as you're done tilling, you're making your rows if you need to. But the another advantage to this size of a house is that you can till in here and it's going to be more, instead of just something hobby size, a little bit more serious production size. So in this space, you've also used the PVC pipe with mm -hmm. the rebar that you can kind of see over here. And with it being this large, it has to go it has to go deeper into it has the ground, to go right? deeper, yeah. And if you think about that wind shear and the problems that we could have with wind, this becomes a little bit more complicated to keep um, the plastic on and keep things together when we have those high winds. So the rebar on this one is three foot rebar. It goes down a foot and a half into the ground and these PVC pieces just slide over. And then if you look on the outside, you can kind of see this um, bailing twine that I have. That's also tied to the rebar and goes up and over and crisscrosses and helps to hold the plastic down when we have a windy day. So really important that you do a number of steps to protect this. Right, we also, you have some framing, some wood framing around the doors. Yep, wood framing around the doors. So on your two short ends, um, you wanna give yourself a nice structure to hold to. And that's gonna give you, you know, some rigidity and again, some protection against the wind. And of course, we're gonna orient that short side towards our prevailing winds to help us. So with, for the snow, you've also got these right yes. here. And you've just put a V cut in the top and mm -hmm. put this under the unions of your PVC. And if you get, you know, a couple times we've had like a foot of snow right. and this holds the house up until you can come out and knock the snow off. Yeah, and I've made the mistake of not having these in when we've had a snowstorm and 
coming to work and driving up and the tunnel is just flat. Oh. <laughs> so you do want to make sure that you keep these up and keep them, them there if we are expecting yeah. a storm. And I just keep them up through the entire winter, then I don't have to worry about it yeah. so much. And if you're in an area that gets a lot of snow, say a cup in the Heber Valley or the Ogden Valley or Cache, you know, it may be a better idea to even have more of them so that you can, for the larger storms. One other thing I've noticed you have back here, Sheridan, is another door. Mm -hmm. What are What's the purpose of the other door? So the other door is to vent. So when it gets warm in here, and Ton, you can look on that thermometer and tell us how warm it is in here. It's like 50 degrees outside, inside. It's already almost 70. Inside our tunnel, it's almost 70. So we are really trapping radiation quickly. So we have to ventilate this space. So opening the doors is important. The other thing I can do when we get really warm is I can pull up the plastic on the sides. And right now I have it weighed down with sandbags on the outside, but I'd remove those sandbags and I can pull the plastic clear up and get some cross ventilation through the tunnel that way with the doors open. And then when we get into, you know, temperatures where I'm not so worried about season protection, we take the plastic off of this. It doesn't stay year round. Okay, the, the thing I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do wrong already, I can tell, is I'm gonna get busy, I'm gonna lose track of the sun and the temperature. And I'm gonna imagine that's the worst thing that I could do. Oh yeah, you can cook your plants really quick and you'll come out and everything will just be toast. <laughs> so this is something, if you're gonna run it, um, you need to put it on your to-do list, on your calendar every day to go check it. You can have temperatures, you can get really techy and have um, temperature gauges that alert you on your phone, you know, with apps, things like that. So you know when you've hit temperatures that you need to go outside and vent. So just for example, those low tunnels, how, I mean, those are gonna heat up pretty quickly. They'll heat up quick, they won't heat up as much as this and um, if we were getting into temperatures where it was warmer and I had been running plastic on a low tunnel I'd switch it to fabric then I don't have to think about it or worry about it too much um, it's just plastic is going to trap the heat better than the fabric maybe I want to switch over to fabric when we're consistently you know above maybe 45 degrees at night and I know my plants are going to be okay with those temperatures at night so in a structure like this if you miss coming out and ventilating, especially in early April when I was working with some of these up in Logan, I read a temperature of 145 degrees on a sunny day. And so you can just quickly ruin your plants. And so this is like being tied down to a farm or a swimming pool or a new puppy to where it requires attention oftentimes every few hours. And so there is a commitment to a structure this size. I've noticed also that you've extended your daylight hours with some lights in here. Yeah, That's something so, fun we can do. Yeah, it's fun and it's not going to be enough light to really, you know, do anything for my plants, but we try to make this a fun space for our master gardeners to be and people who are visiting the botanical center. We light it up in the in the summertime and I really want a disco ball, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll work on that, the disco ball. So biggest thing people do wrong when they start experimenting with low tunnels give us your best advice um just not paying attention to temperatures so you're going to want to watch your temperatures on your phone app whatever app you use like the ksl weather app make sure you're checking that often checking your nighttime temperatures like if we're dipping down below freezing the low tunnels may not be enough protection for some of your crops. So you may need to go out and put a tarp or another blanket or something over those crops. And then again, the high temperature thing. So it's really just paying attention to temperature. I think that's the biggest mistake people make, not taking off the plastic early enough and our plants get cooked. Um, you know, that can happen with a low tunnel too, as well as a high tunnel. So what's your bit, biggest tip for success, Ton? Rotation of plants. You know, you'll have one of these for four, five, six years and you like to grow the same crops over and over and it's no different than a vegetable garden or even if you're doing like flowers in here. And so rotate where you put things, rotate what you do from year to year, keep a map of what you've grown on a piece of paper and keep records because if you grow tomatoes in here for five or six years running you'll build up verticillium and phytophthora but that goes for any crop and so you need to be flexible on what you plant and in addition to the temperature management as Sheridan mentioned be really thorough keeping records of what you put where so that you can avoid pest and disease problems. Have we covered all the bases, Sheridan? I think so. And I can show you something that we're going to use this high tunnel for. Um, but yeah, I think we have really covered all the bases. And 
talking about what Tom's been talking about, this makes it so I don't have to worry about crop rotation. <laughs> so I'm forcing tulips um, and I've been keeping them in a cool dark shed um, at a steady 45 degree temperature where they can get nice and chilled. So things like tulips require so many weeks of what we call um, chill time. So these have been chilled, they're starting to emerge and I can use this tunnel now to bring out my crates of tulips and force them at a timing that I want them to bloom. So I can be a little more in control of my temperature and what's happening um, and how my plant growth is is um, going you know if I kind of pay attention and really work on it a bit so a really fun project if you want to dive in and get kind of sciencey and techy and nerdy yeah. <laughs> some really fun ideas and make sure you tune in to us for the KSL greenhouse show that's on Saturdays from 8 to 11 thanks for being with us